Hello, souls and demons, and welcome to today's, well, bonus episode. I decided I wanted to find a different sort of story out there, and I found this one named An Unexpected Day at the Bakery, written by Neon Willie. Be warned, though, this one's going to be a bit silly. So sit back, grip your seats, and enjoy. The cheesecake's eyes snap open in surprise. What? Where am I? As it surveys its surroundings, it can see other cheesecakes arrayed on the table around it. Guys? Where are we? Before any of them could reply, a stocky, sweaty baker wearing headphones struts into the room singing to himself, cutting off all conversation. He continues to sing as he walks up on the table of cheesecakes and selects two at random. He hits a severely high note as he drags them over towards himself. He picks up his cake server and carefully measures out the pieces he wants to cut, and proceeds to butcher both of them in front of the rest of the cheesecakes, who are screaming in horror. The baker, still singing along to the music blaring in his headphones, scoops up the garnish, the internal organs of the butchered cheesecakes, and ladles it over the corpses. He picks them up and walks out of the kitchen. The remaining cheesecakes are mute and shaking in terror. A violent clamor fills the kitchen as the plates the cheesecakes are mounted on rattle under the weight of their shivering burdens. The lead cheesecake regains his wits first and tries to figure out what's going on. Guys, calm down! That thing might be back any second, and I have no idea what the fuck is going on! What do we do? Silence. Anyone? Shit. Okay, how about we all start screaming shit at him when it gets back? Hopefully he's not expecting it and freaks out and runs? I don't know. We're screwed. Another cheesecake chimes in. How about we each grab a knife or anything sharp and throw it at him as soon as he opens the door? The only reply he receives is... With hands, Barry? Idiot! From way back in the corner and raucous laughter, of course. Before any further genius ideas could be put forward... The baker returns still singing to himself. As he literally has no other ideas, the lead cheesecake screams out, All right, boys, let him have it! As one, all the cheesecakes on the table begin hurling insults at the baker as loud as they can. Curses, threats, and guttural noises fill the air as the oblivious baker starts dancing to accompany his singing. He reaches out and pulls two more cheesecakes toward himself and sets the preparing table for them to display still deaf to the pleas of the cheesecakes around him. Once done, he picks up the cheesecakes, does a quick 180 degree spin to the music and dance steps his way out of the kitchen. Back in the kitchen, the cheesecakes are still at a loss about what to do about their tormentor. They know they can't physically do anything to him as they are unable to move and they can't even get his attention in order to sweet talk or even threaten him. The lead cheesecake pipes up. Right. No one is going to chop me to pieces like some goddamn Mr. Potato Head. When he gets back, we'll... The baker bursts back into the kitchen enthusiastically singing along to a song. He purposefully marches up to the table and pulls the lead cheesecake towards him. The lead cheesecake freezes in shock as he's being dragged toward the baker. The baker reaches for his cake server again and begins to carefully measure out each piece he's going to cut. The lead cheesecake, recognizing that his time has come, clamps his eyes tight shut in terror. As soon as he closes his eyes, he can see the blinding white characters that he's never seen before appear in his mind's eye. Without knowing he even could, he begins to recite each character out loud. As soon as the last syllable leaves his lips, he simultaneously sprouts arms and legs. The baker, still singing along to the music, is caught completely off guard when the cheesecake he's about to cut into jumps up onto the legs that has just sprouted and starts angrily shaking its fist at him. The baker rips the headphones off his head and scrambles backwards. As soon as the headphones clear his head, all he can hear is the angry voice of the cheesecake in front of him. You think you can cut me? The cheesecake picks up a large butcher's knife from the counter and brandishes it toward the baker. Let's see how you like being dismembered, bitch! The baker... Confused and terrified lets out a pathetic whimper and cowers in the corner of the kitchen. 
the cheesecake slowly advances toward the baker. Knife held out ready to launch a furious attack at any second. You've butchered my brothers, you son of a bitch! The cheesecake lowers the knife so the tip is dragging along the table behind him as he approaches the baker. I hope you don't think I'm going to let you off easy. I am going to make this very painful for you and very entertaining for me. Defying all rationality, of which there was very little to begin with in this situation, the baker bursts out laughing as soon as the cheesecake finishes his threat, which infuriates him. The cheesecake lets out a primal roar and leaps at the baker. With the speed and grace of a practiced swordsman, the cheesecake strikes out with a wicked arcing, sideways blow that severs the baker's left arm above the elbow. Landing hard on the floor of the kitchen, the cheesecake rolls on his shoulder and comes to his feet in a fighter's crouch. He has a homicidal, almost barbaric look in his eyes. He now knows the feeling of total domination of someone. He has all the power now. He controls what happens next. He is now the one to decide into how many pieces he wants his victim cut. This thought reminds the cheesecake of his brothers that were taken from him by this monster in front of him. He lets a tear unashamedly roll down his cheek as he stands there silently seething. His breathing becomes deep and intense. The color in his face rises. Ignoring the baker's screams of agony and the blood that is now spraying all over the room as he waves his newly shortened arm around himself in a panic. The cheesecake darks in and executes a perfect slash at the baker's legs, taking him just below the right knee. The baker's shin separates from his knee and topples to the ground with a sickening wet thud and bounces once before coming to a rest. The baker goes into silent shock and stares down at his now two severed limbs. The color drains from his face as blood spouts from his wounds. He wobbles and tries to steady himself on the counter but misses it. Loses consciousness and crashes to the floor, hitting his head on the tiles with a loud crack. Oh no, motherfucker! You don't get to die yet! Says the cheesecake as he picks up a butane culinary torch. He sparks it to life and applies the flame to the blade of the butcher's knife he is still clutching. After waiting for it to turn bright red, he applies the blade to the baker's wounds, cauterizing them and stopping the bleeding. He bandages up the baker's head which had opened up when he hit the floor, as well as his stumps, to ensure the bleeding doesn't start up again too soon and take his life from him. He drags the baker over to a wall and props him up against it, and turns and goes back to speak to the other cheesecakes as they wait for the baker to regain consciousness. Fuck that motherfucker! Thinks he can just butcher us whenever he wants, and we won't do anything? The cheesecakes collectively break out into a cheer and hurl insults and taunts, and the incapacitated baker. The lead cheesecake, feeding off of the energy of his row the brethren, turns and leaps back down to the floor and marches over to the now slowly squirming baker. A mighty thunder peal is heard as the cheesecake lays the mother of all slaps on the baker's cheek. We're not done yet, bud! Not by a long shot! With a sudden burst of strength, the baker levels a heavy backhand blow at the cheesecake catching him in his midsection and sent him flying across the kitchen to hit the opposite wall. Groggily, the cheesecake slowly struggles back to his feet, a feral grin on his face. Finally! Some fun! He sprints toward the baker and launches another frenzied attack with his knife. This time, however, his aim isn't to maim but to inflict as many little cuts as possible to every exposed part of the baker's body. When he's finished, the baker is left with scores of small and painful cuts all over his arm, leg, and both stumps, as well as his neck and almost every inch of exposed skin on his face. As soon as the cheesecake's newest assault is over, he drops his knife and quickly picks up a heavy skillet, and before the baker has a chance to recover it all, starts slamming in the face with it, over and over. Blood and teeth explode from the baker's mouth and splatter the kitchen tiles. The baker again passes out after several more blows to the face and crumples to the floor, unconscious. The cheesecake ties the baker again to the kitchen workbench, so that he is standing on his foot but leaned against the bench, giving him balance. Again, they wait for the baker to come around. While they wait, the lead cheesecake wanders around the kitchen looking for an even bigger knife to use. 
He finally finds an extremely large knife hanging on a wall with some pans and utensils. With a wicked grin, he jumps up and grabs the knife and walks back over the beggar's still form to wait for his victim to rejoin him in the realm of the conscious. The beggar comes to with a sudden jolt and immediately begins to groan and sob as the agony of memories of the day come flooding back to him. He finally realizes he is tied up and tries weakly to wriggle free. The cheesecake slowly walks over to the baker and still clutching the very large knife, climbs up to the workbench so it can get closer to the baker's head. He wants to see the pain etched onto the baker's face up close. As he reaches the top of the bench, he continues to climb up the baker until he reaches his neck. The cheesecake runs the flat of the blade against the baker's throat, which causes him to attempt to lean back and away from the knife, but he is too weak and tied up too tight to do any more than move his head back no more than two centimeters. With a demonic grin and a quick whisper of, Toodaloo, motherfucker! The cheesecake pushes off the baker's neck with his legs and spins around midair so he's facing the baker as he falls to the floor. As he's falling, the cheesecake buries the knife into the baker's chest as hard as he can. The knife lodges deep in the baker's chest and halts the momentum of the cheesecake so he's now hanging onto the knife that is embedded in the baker. The baker throws back his head with a surprising strength and lets out a howl of agony. At the same time, the cheesecake lets out a loud grunt of exertion and tries to pull himself up as high as he can. He then kicks down with all of his strength and holds tightly to the handle of the knife. Suddenly, the baker's chest plate gives in and the large knife cleaves through bone and cartilage and sinew as the cheesecake plummets to the floor, opening the baker up all along the way. The cheesecake lands nimbly on his feet, knife in hand, followed a mere second later by a flood of blood and a rush of guts and organs as they rain down on the cheesecake like the sudden release of an elephant's bowels as a squirrel walks under its tail. The cheesecake loses his footing on the suddenly soaked floor and the weight of the baker's viscera landing on him. He slowly regains his feet and shakes as much of the gore off himself as he can. He looks up at the body of the baker, still tied to the workbench, torso ripped open exposed with traces of intestine and bodily fluid still slowly making their journey to the pile of guts on the floor. He can't help but smile. It doesn't bring them back, but at least he met the same fate my brothers did. He turns back and walks to the display table to the sound of cheers and plates breaking as the cheesecakes lose control celebrating what their leader had just accomplished. Suddenly feeling the need to be alone to process everything he had seen and done that day, he abruptly turns away from the table and toward the front door of the bakery without saying a word. As he reaches and opens the door, he realizes he has left the others with no means to escape and didn't even utter a syllable before leaving. He stops with one foot out the door. He suddenly feels the urge to help his remaining brothers. Holding the door open with his left hand, the cheesecake turns to the other cheesecakes, still stranded on the display table and clear his throat dramatically. Oh my children, lend me your ears! A pregnant pause is followed by bellowing laughter as the cheesecakes collectively release all their pent-up frustration, fear, and grief that they had experienced that day. Everyone was silently thankful for that brief moment of merriment, even if it was brought on by just about the least humorous sentence ever spoken. No, seriously. We've been through some shit today. We have to take the positives out of it. For one, we pulled together as a unit when shit hit the fan. You can't ask for much more than that when the chips are down and you're facing certain death. Also, he dances a little jig as he continues his speech. Check this shit out! Limbs, motherfuckers! Immediately, several cheesecakes yell out, Hurry up and tell us how to grow them! Stop showing off, dickhead! And other various yet similar jibes. The cheesecake acknowledges their frustration and impatience. He takes a deep breath and says, Relax! It's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is close your eyes and take a deep breath. Relax your mind. And you'll see. Suddenly, a passing German shepherd sticks his head through the open door and snatches up the cheesecake, and in one quick motion swallows him whole and bounds off down the street. 
realization slowly sinks in that the remaining cheesecakes are stranded to slowly melt to death, with their only company being the baker's corpse and its horrendous smell. <laughs>